What's up, BC? I'm back. Back behind the camera. I'm back from my yearly trip. Woo! So, um, back from Michigan. And this is actually the last uh, of these beers that I have that I brought back with me from Michigan. So I figured this was an appropriate time to pour it since I will be sharing with you what I found on my trip. And I'll tell you what we're listening to later as I get to it in my, uh, in my video. Hope everyone's been doing well. Cheers. As usual, a um, New England style IPA M43 by uh, Old Nation Brewing Company. Okay, so if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that uh, I have a cousin who lives in Michigan and Ann Arbor and every year, or almost every year, um, I've been going um, to visit him. So I go digging. Uh, last year was the first year I'd went to Detroit. So usually I come back with a stack of all the stuff I've bought throughout the year online. And uh, I have that. This is not what I'm showing in this video. Um, so I've been doing that for a few years. And then last year I decided to go digging in Detroit, which I had not done in years prior. And uh, it was very fruitful. So fruitful. So this year I was really excited to go back. And I'm excited with what I found and excited to share with you. Um, I've only been back I've been back less than a week, so I have not had time to listen to everything, that's for sure. Um, just was catching up today with uh, errands and cleaning and uh, tidying up, spending some time with the girlfriend, but I wanted to quickly, before I go and make dinner, uh, to just hop on and share. So I've kind of placed all the records in order that I found them, so I can kind of take you along uh, the journey. So this may be a little bit of a long video, but... I've had a few people asking me, uh, you know, when are you making a video and wanting to see uh, what I found. So here we go. So uh, I was in uh, Toronto first. Um, I was going to a wedding actually, not outside of Toronto, but um, went into Toronto for a night and within an hour or two of being there, I um, managed to find, uh, decide, or convinced my girlfriend whether we were going to eat in a specific area where I knew there was a record store. So got her to wait uh, 10 minutes while I took a quick, you know, zip through the, the new arrivals. And um, I found this. Steve Kuhn, um, arranged and conducted by Gary McFarland, featuring Ron Carter and Erto. This is on Buddha Records. This is um, promo copy. So yeah, not a record I knew I know the music of, but I know people have posted it and it's a sought after record. And when I saw it there for $5.99, I almost fell over. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's very dope. Um, this is uh, from 1971, it was recorded. Um, so yeah, for those, you know, some electric piano, it's not all electric piano, but some uh, Rhodes on here. Um, Ron Carter on bass and Billy Cobham on drums and Erto. Um, yeah, very dope record and really happy to find it for the nice price. I'll have to keep moving, I guess. Can't speak too long about every record. So needless to say, needless to say the digging part of the trip was off to a good start. Um, this was actually the one I'm going to show as an online purchase. And the reason I'm showing it is because I picked it up on the trip from, uh, from who I bought it from. And I bought it on Instagram. So... Um, yeah, if you don't follow me on Instagram, Needle Groove Vinyl, and I've definitely bought several records on there. Um, and this is one that I bought from someone I follow. I never met him. And, uh, I said like, I'll be in Toronto at some point, hang on to the record. We'll meet up and I'll grab it from you. Uh, I tried in April when I was there, um, for, uh, the Raptors playoff game, but didn't work out. And yeah. So I met up with him the morning right before heading out to Michigan and uh, picked up this record that he uh, was nice enough to sell to me. So the new Rotary Connection, Hey Love, amazing record um, on the, the Cadet Concept label. Um, 
with the, the original inner plays great. So thank you very much. Um, I think his name on Instagram is D Quarles. Um, not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, but yeah, so really happy to add this one to the collection. So I headed out on, um, on Monday and obviously wanting to, my cousin lives in Ann Arbor on the way Detroit. So I was like, let me get this, uh, let me get this started knowing that I was probably going to do a day of digging with my cousin, but you know, there's a lot to go through. So I wanted to get a little head start. So I stopped the peoples as soon as I crossed the ambassador bridge and found a nice little stack and spotted a few things that I was maybe going to come back for. So my original first little stop at peoples, um, this is what I found people's records. If you haven't been amazing store. Um, so yeah, Gary Bart's music is my sanctuary. This is one that I was missing for some reason. Didn't grab this one. I saw it uh, last fall in Toronto at a little fair I went to when I was there for another wedding. Um, but yeah, I listened to this pretty much that night when I got back to my cousins and we were, uh, we were loving it. Um, I have another Gary Bart's is it a love affair or something like that from this period, later seventies that not, you know, so I think maybe this had kind of made me question how good this was, but obviously it's nothing like his early 70s stuff, but it feels really good, soulful. I dig it. Music is my sanctuary, Gary Bartz. This is one that um, when I was there, some guy came in to sell records and they were just putting them out right away. Um, there was a second press stereo press, second stereo pressing of a Love Supreme. I almost grabbed that um, because my copy is not in the best shape, but this one looked clean, but there was a bit of surface noise more than, you know, I was like, if I'm gonna get a second copy, it's gonna be super clean. So I grabbed this. This is um, Jungle Fire by Pucho and the Latin Soul Brothers, the record I didn't know, but they, they put it on and I was like, damn, this sounds really good. So this is a second pressing. And uh, you have in the lineup here this is on Prestige Records. I think it's originally from yeah '69. This would be like a '72 pressing probably. Um, let me name some musicians here: Selden Powell, Neil Creek, Billy Butler, Bernard Purdy, uh, Eddie Pizant. Those are the ones that I that kind of recognize. But yeah, a whole bunch of percussion, Congo, bongos, vibes, miscellaneous percussion. Um, so yeah, comes together, all comes together really nicely. I have another one by him, by uh, Pucho on Prestige. That's probably, I think, just before this. I don't know how many there are. I'm not super familiar with this catalog, but um, this one's dope. Fire, Jungle Fire indeed. A uh, little gospel record. So one of the reasons why, there's two reasons why you could spend tons of times at Peoples. Um, the gospel section, huge and I know nothing, so I could just spend time needle dropping, checking, trying to find some gems. And then 45s, which I don't really collect, but they have a huge wall of boxes of 45. So if you just put me there and said, you're not allowed to go anywhere, I would just start going through the 45s, but don't have time to do that um, on these trips. But I did find, I guess this, I don't know, this must've been in the new arrivals. Cause I don't even think I went through that gospel section that first day, but this is Willie Banks and the messenger, God's goodness. I mean, like, I don't know if this one I haven't taken the price off yet. It was two bucks. Um, this is from Jackson, Mississippi. On uh, oh no, sorry. The label is Nashville, Tennessee. For for bookings, contact Willie Banks. That's uh, the man himself. Um, the address is Jackson, Tennessee. The label's HSE. So yeah, adding to the gospel collection. I think I pretty much doubled my gospel collection on this trip. What I picked up and what I had already I had bought a few online. Here's another one. Um, the Sensational Nightingales, My Sisters and Brothers. This one's on ABC Records. Is it ABC Peacock? Yeah, ABC Peacock. Um, also, yeah, $3. So and these are both in the shrink. Um, so yeah, they. I think Peoples does really well for, they kind of separate their records, like anything above $15, something like that. There's a separate sections for, and then they have, a soul, R&B, jazz, all their other sections 
our kind of general um, sections, but then the section at the front, right in front of the counter and the wall behind is all their like more expensive, but not crazy expensive, just anything that's over $15. Um, but yeah, you can get to find a ton of good stuff in the regular jazz and soul sections, gospel that is really cheap. And you know, it's the stuff that's not as in as good a shape, but a lot of it's VG plus. It's like a blend of VG and VG plus, you know? Uh, still on Peoples. This is Waiting For Little Milton. Didn't know him at all, don't know him, but this is on Stacks and uh, from 1973 and i think i listened to this one while i was there in michigan and it was dope background vocals by the soul children and can't no i don't know any of the musicians on here so yeah another one i picked up for nice price this is actually a double well, i have a canadian pressing of it but i was tempted by this uh, original and i really really like this record this is gwen mccray gwen mccray rocking chair um yeah so i just love that cat label so the canadian ones on rca um what's the song that i absolutely love he keeps something groovy going on if you don't know that song gwen mccray he keeps something groovy groovy going on absolutely love it check it out i, I see this one all the time uh the canadian pressing here but i'm it's findable but definitely recommend you check that out. Okay, so that's it for my first quick stop at Peoples. Um, I was kind of debating whether to stop at Dearborn on the way and I decided to, and this is what I got. So Dearborn is uh, kind of a suburb of Michigan, but I can hit it up on the way to Ann Arbor, uh, suburb of Detroit, sorry. And it's, it's I think, I can, so last year when I went there for the first time, met one of the owners, I think I remember it's two brothers and I think what he told me is his dad owned the store and it's been there since the 50s. It's in a strip mall and it's absolutely huge. Um, there's like kind of like the stores divided in, in two where re most of the record's on one side and um, the other side's mostly CDs, which is just the CD section is like, you know, could be five record stores. Um, it's massive and there's a lot of like, you know, accessories and stuff like that um but the store is dope um same kind of idea they have their like regular sections and then they have their like collectible which is anything i think that's over 15 dollars as well so very similar in that sense to um to people's and what i missed until the last third time i went on this trip on my way back is that there's a new arrival section because there's a new arrival section in front of each section so like jazz new arrivals and then i'll use jazz so i assume they just separated it right away but it turns out um the new arrival section is kind of on the back side of a section i hadn't looked at so i missed it um so yeah who knows what else i missed out on but i just went through the sections and found some great stuff last year i had found a record on strata and on tribe so i kind of had high hopes but knowing that you know it was unlikely i was going to find anything like that um so this is what i grabbed arnie lawrence uh, and Treasure Island. Don't, haven't listened to this yet, but I've heard that it's really good. Some good cheap heat. Uh, so yeah, this is on Therese. Oh, wow. I didn't realize. So Dr. J it's on Dr. Jazz, but J Dr. Jazz is Teresa Gramophone Company. Is that the same? Anyway, so looking forward to listening to that. This, they had two copies of this, so I chose the one I wanted. Um, haven't listened yet, but was on my want list, so I was happy to find it. Never come across Max Roach, Drums Unlimited on Atlantic. And this is like a super thick, um, glossy gatefold. Who else is on here? It's really nice. This is a, have the original inner, and it's an original mono pressing. So Max Roach, James Spaulding, Freddie Hubbard, Ronnie Matthews, Jimmy Merritt, and Roland Alexander. Looking forward to this. This record that's on right now is very good. I don't know how well you guys can hear it, um, but it's highly recommended. Kind of should have bought two copies and given it to someone. 
Uh, this is one I'd kind of been on my want list as well. Never, I had seen an original once, but it was way more than I wanted to pay. This is uh, Esther Marrow, Newport News, Virginia, on Flying Dutchman, original pressing, in great shape. Still, uh, the gatefold's never even been cracked. Still in the shrink. Uh, I don't think I, I've, I've listened to this and I don't think that I like it as much as the other Esther Marrow record that I have. Um, which is not on Flying Dutchman. I think that one's a more, bit more soulful, upbeat. This one's a bit more um, ballady, mellow, but I have to give it a few more, uh, more listens. This was the highlight of this, uh, this visit to Dearborn. So not the whole trip, but this specific uh, initial kind of scouting um, was this, the only one I pulled off their wall. Uh, Brother Jack McDuff moon wrapping, been, wanting to find a copy of this have never come across i have a reissue um i'll be happy to pass that off uh, to someone or sell it um but yeah this is uh was really happy to find uh, a nice uh, original pressing of this record and i put this on as soon as i got back i hadn't listened to it in a while and man it's a good record i know a lot of people aren't into the organ records and i kind of you know i have a bunch but don't buy too many try to stay away from more organ records but this is at the top of organ records as far as i'm concerned and both of these actually i had uh, reissues of so we'll be uh, moving those out okay so uh that was monday uh tuesday i went to encore records which is um the store in ann arbor um i didn't find any, there was a couple things that I could have grabbed or some stuff I already had, but I didn't. And there was a, a record they had on Discogs, which I kind of brought up to them and they were willing to make, an, make a deal with me on it. But I was like, let me, let me see um, what happens throughout the next week. And then if I still want to spend money, but it turns out I didn't go back to buy that record. I did go back, but anyway. So Encore has been there for a long time. Uh, they just moved. Um, so right now they were kind of open in current two, two locations. The location was closing while I was there. Um, so checked out the new one. Feels, it will be really nice, but it's, um, I'm sure some of you have been there to Encore Records in Ann Arbor. It was still a little empty feeling, you know, they were still filling up the bins. They didn't have anything on the wall yet, um, but it's a nicer building. So, and they still have those old wooden bins that they had. So there's a bit of the feel of the old one. Obviously it won't feel like that old 90s record store, but it's gonna be a really nice shop. I'm looking forward to checking that out, um, hopefully next year. Uh, so I knew I was going to be hitting up a full day of digging with my cousin on Thursday was what we had planned. Um, I think last year we'd hit nine stores in one day. I knew we couldn't do as much because we were going um, to a concert at night. We were going to see Karis one. So I decided on Wednesday. So Tuesday I went to Encore. Wednesday I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back to Dearborn and maybe people. So what I ended up doing is you know, I was like, I know that these are the biggest shops and there's a lot of other shops I want to check out on Thursday. So let me go back to these now and dig a little deeper. Cause I had kind of just like ripped through them really fast, knowing that I wanted to get, get to my uh, destination on that day. So yeah, I went back and I'm really glad I did cause I got some good stuff. So kind of the, the find of the, the trip, well, two of them were was what I pulled out so I walked uh actually I walked into Dearborn did some dinging chose a few things and as I was walking out and I looked back up at the wall and hello I came across two Dorothy Ashby records so was not expecting this uh these are original pressings original inners they literally look brand new um they weren't super cheap but they weren't like crazy expensive um so I was thrilled i've been looking for both of these particularly this one but yeah i've been really wanting these and what's funny enough the only other time i've seen either of these records um in person was in detroit last year at people's they had a copy of both of them and this one was completely destroyed and this one i think was a hundred bucks but the cover had water damage and anyway so i got them for cheaper and for in way better condition so was thrilled beautiful music and beautiful copies of these uh soul jazz classics um 
very happy about that. Excuse me a second. This is a, also, I got a new record player. I don't think I told you guys that. Techniques SL1401. So yeah, love it, love it. Um, what else did I get at Dearborn on my second trip? I grabbed a second copy of this cause I absolutely love it. And I've only ever, I've never seen it other than the copy that I have. Um, so I wanted to just, you know, grab it while I had the chance and I'll probably uh, give it to someone as a gift or I'll, uh, I'll sell it. I have a bunch of records to sell that I might, you know, go to a show or something and just to kind of beef up the crates. Um, it was like, you know, normal market price and I'd probably sell it for the same, but it's such a good record. If you don't know this, the new Dave Pike set, this was recommended to me by um, Egon. He posted it uh, on his now again um, Instagram account. So if you don't know that, check that out. I think there's copies, you know, available for, um, they're not expensive on Discogs, definitely go buy that right now um it's really good i grabbed this i had seen someone but i think i'd seen this last year in, in at encore um didn't grab it i had seen someone post it and was kind of curious so anyway i checked it out because that encore the one thing that drives me crazy is there's no listening station um so yeah i hate that anyway um i guess it's a university of town and they just think that students are going to come in and just be destroying records, I don't know. Um, so nice modal record actually. The Jimmy Owens and Kenny Barron Quintet, You Had Better Listen, is the original mono pressing on Atlantic. I think I saw three three or four copies of this in, throughout my journey, um, but yeah. Benny Maupin's on here, Freddie Waits on drums. And the other one, okay, so, uh, I spoke to the owner that I'd seen last time when I was leaving, I, I went up to him um, and started chatting a bit. I asked him if he, last year he had had a box of stuff that wasn't out. Um, he's like, no, no, keep chatting. Um, he tells me a bit about why those, he's like, oh, you should have, if Saturday the wall was full. Um, and then it, for some reason, those Dorothy Ashby records didn't make it out. I don't know, I didn't really understand why, I guess, but uh, I was really happy that um, they did that they didn't and that they did when uh, when they did. If that makes sense. So anyway, and then after chatting for a bit, he's like, he asked his employee like, oh, go show him that box of stuff. So anyway, turns out he did have some stuff, did have some stuff. Um, I can't remember what else was in there, but I grabbed one record from it. Um, Soul Junction, the Red Garland Quintet featuring John Coltrane and Donald Byrd. Not an original, it's a, a second pressing. I probably wouldn't have afforded or Drop the money for an original, but happy with a, a second pressing of this one. The label's a bit, uh, looks like it has a bit of water damage or it's coming off a bit, but anyway, happy to have a copy of this. Great record. Um, so then I hit up, uh, left there, hit up um, Hello Records in Detroit, which is really close to People's and small little shop curated, uh, didn't find anything that I, I wanted to leave with, but it was, you know, it's definitely hit up. A lot of people speak really highly of Hello. Um, and yeah, so. Um, I think I'll just finish this, what I grabbed at uh, People's. Um, and then I'll do a second video for the, the full day of digging with my cousin. So I grabbed, um, went back to People's. And one, there was a record I had seen that I kind of regretted not picking up. Uh, so I went back and uh, I grabbed it. It was still there, which shocked me for the price that it was. Um, but anyway, this is Monk Montgomery Bass Odyssey. On, it's a label I don't know, actually. I was kind of surprised. Chisa, I'm Chisa. There you go. Um, I had seen this in Montreal once and for some reason didn't buy it. Then I had seen a bunch of people post it, was annoyed that I didn't grab it. Um, so yeah, it's happy to find it again, although for a bit more than I had seen it for in Montreal. Um, but it's an original press and I think the Montreal one was a Canadian pressing, which is on a different label. Um, okay. And to finish off this video, um, 
this is what we're listening to. And um, so I spent some time digging. Uh, and then they're attached to Trinisoft's. I don't really know what the connection is. I think there, there's a door that goes between the two of them. Coffee shop, space where they can have live music. Um, not really sure what else. Um, I think there's other stuff that goes on there, but um, so I walked into there as I was leaving and they had a little kind of glass container with some records and I, and I saw this and I was, it, it rang a bell. I, I knew this cover and I remember that this is a record that I had checked out online recently and was really digging. I've listened to it a bunch in the car on my phone and I couldn't remember what it was called because this, this sticker wasn't even on there on that copy. Um, so I went back to the store and was going to ask him what, uh, what, um, what the deal was with that record because I, I remember listening to it and I saw on the there's a wall that I hadn't really seen of new records they don't really carry new records at people's but I guess they do for like some local stuff and anyway there was a copy of this um there and I grabbed it and I was like I you know I want to buy this I, I remember listening to it and it turns out Sam the guy working there who I chatted with a bit um he was part of this project put, putting it out so this is called Quartet Now and it's a, a Detroit jazz record. Um, I don't know the musicians. Um, I know some of them, you know, they're older guys, but Alex Harding on baritone sax, Vincent Chandler on trombone, Rocco Popilarski on bass, and Dr. Professor Leonard King on drums. Um, but yeah, so the, the label is called Two Rooms. This is the first release, um, Two Rooms Records. Um, and yeah, he, he put this out, the guy working there, Sam. Really dope. Check this out. I had, the reason I found about out about this is um, uh, Funk Night Records. I kind of peruse their website once in a while and see what's there. And uh, they carry their own records as well as other records. So Funk Night, check it out. A lot of 40, like Soul 45s and stuff. Um, but yeah. And uh, the first time I'd went there actually, uh, I met Lucas who I follow on Instagram, big blue note collector. Lucas Liska, I think is his name. But as soon as I walked in on Monday, he was behind the counter, introduced myself, we talked, um, really nice guy. So yeah, always cool to connect with people that uh, I follow uh, online uh, or through social media. Um, so that was two. Uh, Dave, um, who I picked up the Rotary Connection record from, and Lucas, who works at Peoples. Um, yeah, so that's the, the first half, I guess, of my um, digging adventures in Detroit and then the next day was Thursday where I went out and picked up a bunch of other records so that'll be another video because I think 28 minutes is long enough so to be continued peace